we've always tried to stick to time in these meetings and my team has been you know over the years we've been doing a conference every year from 1999 they are not huge melas they are small conferences where we can ask questions and have a proper interaction with the faculty and these conferences have been possible only because of friends who are ready to come down to india every year year after year i will i have a, a not so pleasant news to share our guest of honor who was supposed to inaugurate the meeting his daughter is in a critical care unit in the us and he had to rush there couple of days back so mr khanna who is the cmd of mcure will not be with us i will begin with a small presidential talk which will not be boring i promise you for people like ofer and shai who have seen me in israel but they haven't really seen india in our meetings we'll give you and for first timers to our meetings i'll give you a small introduction of our group rotunda we are now four centers and about 70 staff strong we are 70 people in the group and we have now moved to the next level and started a foundation for education which is a registered charity with the government of india and we would the foundation is called ivf light foundation with the sole purpose of making ivf more affordable and accessible to the poorer and developing nations all across at the recent world congress in tunis we got a platform to spread the message about the foundation and i will tell you in brief what are our plans and where india i hope india now like the prime ministerial candidate narendra modi says we it's time for us to create a brand india what can india contribute to medical education across the world towards the end of the talk i will tell you our small plans to make brand india a bigger entity which is possible only with the indian industry support they say gynecologists have an interesting view of life this is a small introduction about our work rotunda was founded in 1996 and really gay couple have had a baby through in and in the year 2005 could you raise the volume clinic. please now this development comes at a time when indians are still debating the validity of section 377 which outlaws homosexuality prachi jatania has this report This cuddly baby is literally a bundle of joy for Israeli gay couple Omer and Yonatan Geir. The couple had a baby through in vitro fertilization in a Mumbai based clinic. Yonatan who heads a gay rights organization in Israel can hardly hold back his sense of pride on becoming a father. The couples out there we would just like to say that it is possible. <laughs> we're now at the end of our process. Our child is a month old. and we're very happy this couple's courageous step comes at a time when india is debating the validity of section 377 and several gay rights activists have been lobbying to scrap this outdated legislation this will be very common dostana part 2 might have their kids in the movie after a painstaking and careful selection of the egg donor for over 4 months omer and yonatan shortlisted only those who scored high on iq Baby Aviatar even celebrated his one month birthday with the doctors here. For Israeli gay couple Omer and Yonatan, it is a bold move to let the world see their IVF baby. But can this also signal a new hope or a way forward for several gay couples in India who've been rallying hard to secure their rights? Law is repealed. I'm very curious to know how many Indian gay couples will come forward for completing their families. Though the couple is from a relatively orthodox country their decision to have a family will now give hope to other gay couples worldwide meanwhile Omer and Yonatan are now back in Tel Aviv and are set for their innings in parenthood in Mumbai Prachi Jatania This was covered by CNN and this was 2005 in 2013 the Indian government has banned surrogacy 
gestational surrogacy for same sex couples for uh, live in couples and the reason given is that we are a conservative country and until the local laws for homosexuality are repealed no clinic in india will be allowed to offer uh, gestational surrogacy to same sex couples live in couples and single parents but india is moving ahead very rapidly and we have over 1500 ivf clinics today across india and research and publications are increasing by 14 to 15% every year we are having an increase in peer reviewed international publications at our own center we began with a staff of four in 1996 and research continues to shape the practice of medicine at rotunda it doesn't matter if you are not a corporate giant like fortis or apollo or any other big multinational name what matters most is how you see yourself you have to have a goal a solitary goal a target that you work towards and in medicine the goal always has to be research oriented it has to be research that shapes the future of medicine all over the world we have every fortnightly across the four clinics we have a joint clinical research meeting where we truly believe that clinical care would be most beneficial when integrated with research and education in our endeavor to make ivf affordable to the poorest of poor countries we have spread our wings to africa africa really needs ivf and we are getting from african countries a lot of trainees who spend 6 months 8 months a year with us learning about ivf light about minimal stimulation ivf we have two lectures in this conference telling you one about how ivf light is done with success rates in excess of 50% live birth rates and how ivf can be spread in developing economies at a fraction of the cost of conventional ivf after these trainees go back this is a picture from ghana a small town called kumasi in ghana we had dr kantum come in stayed with us for 6 months and then i went down there with goral our lab director and we set up their ivf program we have now trained clinicians embryologists from across the world we have actually we are proud to tell you that we have the head of department of embryology come down from the university of hawaii to learn egg freezing at rotunda he specially flew down for two days all the way from hawaii to learn egg freezing and go back and he's now following the masashi gekuyama's method of vitri cryotech vitrification this is a picture from kuama usually this slide comes at the end of the talk but i want to acknowledge i really want to acknowledge people who have made this conference possible in this very difficult year this year we had our currency devalued by almost 35% industry has been suffering usually these big conferences and meetings are possible only because of industry support all across board in india has been a difficult time across all industries including the medical uh, industry the hospitals and despite that we have had people who had the faith and who wanted to be part of brand india that indians will contribute to medical education and dissemination of knowledge i would not be standing here if i was not given a sound solid education by my parents my mom is no more but the best inheritance parents can give a child is a good education and i dedicate all the meetings i do from 1999 to my parents and my mother who brought us up and gave us a solid education i am indebted to my father who is here present with us he is 86 for living but to my teacher for living well on the screen are pictures of my teachers from medical college who really had faith in my abilities who supported me by the time i completed my md i had over 150 international publications that was possible 
only because of the teachers having faith, confidence and support and support all the way where we could really do good clinical research and we had ethical committees getting the projects passed in a short period of time. A teacher affects eternity. He can never tell where his influence stops. These are wonderful words and one must never forget one's teachers in the quest of knowledge. This conference again was single-handedly done by these two individuals. They are there with us, Goral Gandhi, our lab director for the last 13 years. We are working together and Sulbha was with me again for seven years. They have coordinated, we didn't have event managers. We have been from the clinic coordinating one-on-one -on -one with the faculty and with the industry and with the delegates, trying to see that a personalized appeal and a personalized invitation is sent to everybody who's part of our meetings. So thank you, Gorul and Sulba. Again, I told you this year was very difficult. Really, believe me, that if I had gone just to the industry, I have had people who have supported us for years. This year just disappeared, citing it's a difficult year for the industry and we don't have budgets for holding a conference. And it was only because of friends in the industry, friends in the medical community, that this conference was possible. I will honor some of them who are here, who have stood by us in this not so good year. When I find myself fading, I close my eyes and realize my friends are my energy. I think Meenakshi is here and Mandy, unfortunately, cannot be. I, Meenakshi was here. Meenakshi, remember this from Varanasi. Yeah, so, you know, these are friends who have come for every conference from 1999, wherever we've held them, Khajura, Varanasi, Coimbatore, Pondicherry, everywhere, you know, friends have been part of this meeting. Rupin, unfortunately, is in USA presently and he's not with us. Again, our faculty from all over the world, every year, every year they come, they support us. Whatever happened, there might be wars, you know, United Nations battles or whatever. But in this conference, we have people from all over. We have faculty from Iran and we have faculty from Israel and Jordan and you know, for education, everyone has helped us put a step forward and forgetting politics have gone ahead just for the dissemination of knowledge. I really want to thank all the faculty who could come. And at the last moment, yesterday, we have had five faculties dropping out. This was, I think, a record first for our meetings. And luckily, we have people here who have the lectures, so they are going to cover. There's not going to be a single lecture cancelled. We are going to give you topics which have never been touched upon on the Indian subcontinent like oocyte volume and infertility results. So th this is something which I think Spectra does every year. They record the videos and if we have 300 doctors here, they give these videos of our conferences to 1200 infertility doctors across India. So we are going to do it again this year. And these are topics really which have not been covered in conferences elsewhere. Again, these are just some memories from our previous conferences. This was a conference on PCOS. Professor Anand Kumar, who was on the editorial board of RBM Online, had inaugurated the meeting. He's no more with us. Kedar is there with us and he's always part of our meetings. And we have faculty from Mexico again. We have Dr. Suarez today from Guadalajara in Mexico who's come down and Alessandro could not. And I don't know if you can read the... We have a nice database of about 20,000 gynecologists who are interested in infertility and we send our mailers to them through the year. I don't know if somebody can give me a pointer. If you can read the email, it's not been smooth sailing all the time. And the last line on that slide is a very interesting line, if you can read, that we have really battled even abuse. Uh, 
okay, this damn thing is not working, but it's as usual. Okay, this is from last year. Uh, this is from last year. We had a, in the same venue, in the same hall, we had a relatively bigger meeting where we really fell short of space. This was the World Congress of Ovulation Induction and Ovarian Stimulation Protocols, again, which went on till late night, and they were like 20-minute discussions after a 20-minute lecture. We had almost 45 international faculty from all the five continents, and it was a wonderful meeting. We're doing the next World Congress in Jaipur next year in August 3 to 6, so mark your diaries. We have really cutting-edge technology and advances in ovulation induction and newer drugs that will be discussed next year. This is the hotel, again, Radisson, where we had, it's one of the favorite hotels where the staff knows us, we know the property, it's easy to hold conferences, and they have wonderful cooperation. This is just a clip to tell you that Goa is not only conferences, Goa is a place where there is the only place in India where you have casinos. So at late at night, they're open all night. After the meeting and dinner, for those of you who want, can go and play backgammon and cards. We have offshore casinos as well as casinos within a kilometer of here. This was just a nice clip a friend sent me about gambling. So play backgammon at Goa, you have wonderful casinos here, only place in India where you have casinos. And why do we do this? You must know a little bit about Indians. What are the habits of Indians? Besides this, what are Indians giving to the world? I think it's time now, 1947, we got our country back. In 2013, we are on the verge of creating a brand India that will give a lot to the world. And I have set out for the last, since 1990, I have been traveling, speaking at international meetings and have friends all over the world. And now with the help of this network of over a thousand friends in this field across the world, we have our own plans of what we are going to give to the world in terms of education long after we are not there. The true meaning of life is to plant trees under whose shade you do not expect to sit. I have a vision that as of now, till date, all the journals that we read in our field have come in from the West, and we are learning everything from these journals. All the knowledge that is imbibed is from the journals which are printed in the Western world, in the Western hemisphere. My dream was to set up a foundation with the help of Indian companies, Indian industry, and Indian doctors that could be truly an international journal which would disseminate and be treated with the same respect that we treat fertility, sterility, or RBM online, or human reproduction. So we have 
made the framework, got an international editorial board. Some of them are sitting here in our midst. The journal is called IVF Light. Basically, it will cover everything in ART. IVF Light, it will cover topics where we can have affordable ART and IVF in developing economies but would also compare conventional IVF to IVF, mini IVF, and also cover basic treatments like IUI and induction of ovulation. The website is set up. We have almost, it will be a bi-monthly journal. The first issue will be launched in January 2014. We have registered it with the government of India. Walters Kluwer, which is the third largest publishing house in the world, has agreed to take this journal across all the continents. They have one of the strongest distribution networks. Within a year, they have promised us to have all the issues indexed retrospectively in all the databases. My aim now or ambition now is just to see that this journal gets good quality scientific material. It's a personal appeal to all the scientists here especially to the Indians here, that please send us good material. We have the numbers. I want, I have just started practice in the Middle East. I practice in Sharjah and I have asked the clinicians in that region as well that please publish papers, send us good publications on ART for this journal so that it helps us and we, it, it will be put through a rigorous peer review process and it's going to be at par with any other scientific publication. For the first two years, it will be open access. So I request all the faculty here that please send us publications. The industry, the Indian companies have really come forward and supported this because some of my friends share this dream that yes, India can also give to the world. And I hope the other multinationals who are there with us in the audience also see that getting a journal disseminated in India and across the world is part of their marketing strategies in the next financial year. For the 1,200 Indian registered IVF clinics, the Indian pharma companies, initially who have really supported us, Bharat Serum, MCure, have said that they will see that all the IVF doctors in India get all the six issues complimentary from them. And for the other countries, there is online subscription and we will approach big multinationals maybe who can distribute the initial copies to these specialists in their parts of the world. For the first two years, it's open access so you can read them on the net as well. The URL is www.ivflight.org. So this is what really India wants to give to the world. And you know, day and night today, I think of just this, of how to get the journal to the next level with the help of friends. This is in Hindi. So Indians would understand it. It's a very nice couplet written by one of our uh, literary giants, Javed Akhtar. It's a very nice thing to think about. Zindagi hai to khab hai, khwab hai to manzile hai, manzile hai to fasle hai, fasle hai to raste hai, raste hai to muskile hai, muskile hai to hausla hai, hausla hai to vishwas hai, kyunke fighter hamesha jitta hai. We have to put India on the world map and we have, we, we have the patients, we have the scientists, we have the research. Our problem was we never published. But the next gen India, I have seen, the next gen India suddenly got connected with Facebook. And I'm seeing that we have a lot of people now writing and publishing. And we want these next gen Indian scientists to contribute to this journal. Now, this is the last slide. This will, after this inaugural ceremony and the Mylan Awards, you will have a very big party. And 
there's going to be plenty of spirits to and i hope that all of you will go richer both in knowledge and in spirits thank you very much and i welcome you again to this meeting and i really hope that this meeting will offer a lot of new knowledge that will be a first on the indian subcontinent thank you very much thank you very much for a patient hearing